This video is sponsored by Come to Us. What's going on, everybody? This child is back at it again, coming at you with another video for Skylanders Ring of Heroes. Once again, I want to extend my thanks on over to Come to Us. Thank you so much for sponsoring this video, and thank you so much for supporting our channel. So, in today's video, what we're going to be taking a look at is the four different ways that we can improve our Skylanders by means of powering up awakening evolving and of course the runes now when we take a look at uh, everything in a nutshell uh, we have a lot of things to cover today so we're going to break things down one by one and, and basically in the way i would kind of prioritize okay so first of which is going to be the runes when it comes to the different types of ways you can improve your skylanders the runes by far are going to be the most important thing you can do now why is that when it comes to you know creating a team composition there's a couple of things that we're going to be looking at we're going to be looking at the choices that we got when it comes to our skylanders the overall synergy of the skylanders that we use and then the rune quality that we're going to be incorporating onto our skylanders now as you might have guessed all those three things work together and if you are missing one out of the other it's going to hurt you uh, in a really really strong way now the thing why i value rune quality over everything is because in this type of game even though certain skylanders have different abilities taking the time to grind out those high quality runes is really is what's going to give you the edge versus some of your opponents whether we're talking about adventure mode or even pvp now before we jump into the runes let's just kind of break down some of the stats that you can get the primary or the secondary substats that you can get on these runes as that's what's going to be really really important for you as you move on to the game now but when we're talking about the beginners uh, for the majority of you guys watching this video the first three stats that you see right there the attack the defense and the hp that's what we're really going to be focusing on why is that because uh, as you will see in here in a, in a few minutes here with regards to the, the rune quality the rune grade as we get farther into the game we can basically obtain high quality runes that give us a little bit more value out of those runes whereas when we first get started there's not a lot of uh you know really good stats that we're going to be able to obtain on those runes so the three main ones to focus to bring us just the basic stats that we need to get through the content are going to be those first three that we've already mentioned here the attack the defense and the hp now when it comes to the critical rate all the way down through the block rate if you see on the bottom right there all of these statistics outside of the block damage are going to be some of the uh, stats that you can obtain on the runes here. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the runes right now. Uh, of course, we got six runes that you can obtain. And we're going to start out with the top one being one. And then we're going to go clockwise to kind of count it out. So obviously, the uh, top one up above is going to be one. Slot two is going to be the one kind of pointed to the two o'clock. Slot three and slot four, of course, on the bottom. And then, of course, slot five and slot six. So just kind of working your way around there now. When it comes to the primary stat that you can obtain on these runes, the one, the three, and the five slot are going to be uh, plain stats, okay? And they're going to be stats that are never going to change. So slot one, as you can see, the main stat's gonna be attack. Slot three, that main stat's gonna be defense. And then slot five, you're gonna have the HP. And when I say uh, the main stats, I'm saying a flat stat. So you're never gonna see a percentage uh, attack uh, stat as the main stat on this on this specific rune here and again for this one it's going to be a flat defense and for this one here slot five is going to be a flat hp now when it comes to your two four six slot these are going to be ones that you're going to really want to focus on as you move into the later stages of the game this these ones are going to have a lot more options to do um, now the one that i'm rocking right now is a, is, is an attack flat one um, but you can obtain attack defense critical rate and accuracy those are some of the main stats uh, that you will see on those okay now for the slot four this one here you can obtain defense hp block rate and even uh effect accuracy okay for that slot four and the last but not least for the slot six we can obtain critical damage evasion effect resistance and of course uh attack as well as HP. So you can kind of see between the two, four, the six, not every single one, you can have attack, defense, and HP so that when you are getting ready to set up your Skylanders down the road, you got to make sure that uh, if you're looking for a specific stat, whether it's defense or HP, whatever the case may be, you need to make sure that that specific slot can actually obtain that stat. So the three main stats we were talking about, the attack, defense, and HP, regardless if we're talking about the two, four, or the six slot, all those specific runes have the option to either have flat stats or percentage-based stats. Now, one of the things that you're gonna pick up in the later stages of the game is that the percentage-based stats generally seems to be the one to go for because when we think about the stats that we currently have versus the stats that we would start out with for, let's say, a level one Skylander like Washbuckler, um, percentage-based stats are gonna scale over time. Now, 
in this specific game, in Skylanders Ring of Heroes, one of the cool things I really like about this game is, you know, whether, whether you have a flat stat or a percentage based stat, you're going to get a, a really good amount of value. But uh, believe it or not, flat stats actually are going to be the one that you're going to want to favor for. Why? Because your overall base stats are going to be really, really low. So having a flat stat early on in the game um, is really, really nice and it's going to give you a little bit more bang for your buck here. So uh, you can kind of already see already, even for me, uh, as this one here is maxed out, 6 star, level 70 here, I am still running uh, some uh, flat stats here. I have a flat attack uh, rune right here. I got a force percentage over here. But honestly, um, if I were to play around with my rune uh, and switch out some stats, I, I wouldn't be surprised if I can obtain uh, more or less the same stats, if not more, by using a flat stat. Um, flat stat rune versus a percentage based stat. So basically, for the people out there that are getting into the team, just use what you got, find the runes throughout the scenarios, throughout the quest line, you know, equip what you got. However, if you do have the option of going flat stat as far as the attack, defense, or the HP for the 246 versus the percentage based stat, I definitely recommend going for the flat stat as you're going to get a little bit more value out of that. Now, if you guys haven't played any type of uh, Hero Collector RPG that requires any kind of equipment or runes to use, let's go ahead and kind of break that down as far as the rune grade goes so you guys can kind of get an idea of what you need to do uh, when you're looking at these specific runes here, okay? So first up, let's talk about the five different uh, rune grades. We have uh, the gray rune, which is going to be normal. The next one up is going to be premium, which is green. The next one is going to be rare, which is blue. We have heroic. And then last but not least, we have legendary. Now, again, this specific grade of a rune is basically obtained once you hit uh, so many power-ups on a specific rune. It basically goes up every three uh, from zero to 12. And then, of course, uh, the maximum that you can have on a rune is going to be 15. Now, uh, some of these runes that you're going to collect are going to start out with gray or green or blue, whatever the case may be. But sometimes uh, if you start out with a gray per se and power it up, you will notice that the grade of the rune per se is going to improve from its current one, which right here is going to be uh, normal, and it's going to improve on over to a premium one. So now if we get out of here and we take a look at it, it's considered a premium room because we've upgraded, uh, we've given it the deposit of three here. So um, now when it comes down to a, uh, a straight premium rune versus one that you upgraded, you will notice that basically that's going to dictate uh, the amount of subsets that it has at the start. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the strike rune right here. This one here, again, is a normal rune. And as you can see, we just have the primary stat for the accuracy, but we don't have any kind of substats beneath it. But if I were to scroll up here and take a look at this strike set for slot four, you will notice that I have an additional substat underneath the effect accuracy here. Um, premium rooms are always going to start out with one uh, stat there. And if you uh, level it up to plus three, the bonus that you can obtain is going to go to that stat. OK, um, and then now if we were to let's say we were to take that and bring it up to like a plus uh, six, uh, which we're going to be doing right here, um, we're going to get an additional stat that is going to basically just drop right down below uh, the block rate. Now, if let's say, for example, we had this rune and it already was blue at the start, right? And it had two substats already. The bonuses that we're gonna be able to obtain for every three upgrades on this rune are gonna go to one of those two stats. But if we were to take that blue rune and move it on over to a heroic rune, right? Or, or sorry, a rare rune, which is gonna be the purple, that would uh, bring us a new substat. Uh, over time now. So why is this important when we're talking about rune grade and rune quality? Well, if we were fortunate enough uh, to get ourselves a legendary rune at the start, when we take a look at something like this, you will see that all of the subsets are already in place. So the only thing that can happen is the improvement of the current stats that we have. And of course, as we go throughout the game, we're going to be collecting some runes. And that's what it comes down to. Not only getting the high quality runes that have the subsets that you want, but being able to improve those substats over time as you level it up to plus 15. So this is very, very important to kind of keep an eye on that. I know I'm throwing a lot your way when it comes to the beginners, but ultimately I want you to really understand the value of runes when it comes to uh, building your Skylanders because this is pretty much the foundation of what you have to do uh, as you move through the game. All content revolves around runes and what you can do to improve those runes on your Skylanders, okay? Now, the second way we can go about improving our Skylanders is going to be basically powering them up. Now, of course, the powering up option is not gonna be available until we summon it, so what we're gonna be doing here, we're gonna go ahead and summon the igniter so we can kind of see uh, what I'm talking about here. So, as you can see, apparently I had a quest to get cleared and uh, I was able to do that. So here we are, igniter, a three-star fire-based Skylander that is ready to go. So, if we were to come over to the power-up tab for 
uh, for igniter we can see that uh, basically the one thing that we need as far as the materials early on are going to be the soul stones or the fragments of these skylanders and then of course we need a couple of uh, upgrade elixirs now now of course these are going to vary versus small medium or large now when it comes to you guys first getting started out um the small ones are going to be the ones you're going to be looking for you're going to be able to obtain this through the distorted dimension which is where we get our runes as well as our upgrade material for each of the skylanders so take a look at its base stats overall right now uh, we're sitting at plus zero once we first get the skylander that we summon okay but this can actually go up to plus five um if we have the material so that's what we're going to be doing so you guys can see that here uh taking a look though um at these stats that they improve you can kind of see uh, where the bonus comes from, right? The attack, the defense, and the HP. Now, it doesn't seem uh, like too much, but again, these are improvements uh, that's a, that are going to assist uh, us later down the road, right? We have this completely powered up, and now we have the option um, to go ahead and evolve it, which is going to be the next step here. So as you can see, I currently cannot evolve it because even though I do have uh, enough pieces to get it done, I'm going to go ahead and have to level this up to 40 and max it out before I can do that. Now, I do want to kind of pay your, uh, have you pay your attention here to, to take a look at this. Um, you do have an option for exchanging uh, when you need uh, specific uh, pieces for that uh, Skylander. Now, uh, it actually gives you an option to uh, see where you can farm it or use Omni Gems if you want to go ahead and do that. So if you take a look at this, this is another type of material that you're going to be collecting over time. This material you're going to use uh, as a substitute for your Skylanders uh, in which you need fragments. Now, early on in the game as a beginner, I honestly would stay away from this. I would not spend any kind of additional resources or any using any kind of Omni Gems for any basic Skylander to get started out with. I believe that the high quality Skylanders, those uh, four stars and those five, la size, those five star Skylanders that are super, super good, um, you're going to want to save some of those Omni Gems for those uh, when you figure out which ones you really like and which ones really synergize well with some of your other Skylanders for your specific teams. Okay. Now, as you can see, my Wallop is currently maxed out at level 40 with all the power-ups into him. He's at plus five right now. So now, since I've went ahead and maxed him out on the power-up side, now I can go ahead and evolve him because I meet all the requirements here. So uh, this is basically leading us to the next stage of uh, evolution per se, no pun intended, right? When it comes to the ways of improving your Skylanders, it's going to be evolving. Now evolving is going to increase the max level of, of the Skylanders that we're taking a look at. And of course, that's very, very important because uh, the approval of the level uh, allows us our base stats to go ahead and improve so that we can uh, just get that much more uh, stats when it comes to our base stats, the attack, the defense, and the HP that you can see right here. So when it comes to this, all we have to do is obviously have the resources, the fragments that we need, of course, and the uh, uh, the goal to be able to level up. And it's a quick click and we got the evolution complete. So once that happens now, you will see that the power up goes back down to zero. And once again, we're going to have to continuously uh, farm up these soul stones or collect them through our summons in order to get ourselves enough power-ups to not only uh, max it out, uh, but also to evolve it yet again here. Now, the last thing I want to focus on with regards to improving your Skylanders is going to be the exclusive feature within the Skylanders universe called the Awakening feature. This is the one that I would say I would put at the very, very end when it comes to uh, improving your Skylander, because why is that? You can kind of see, regardless of which Skylander we're taking a look at here, the requirements are going to be a little bit high on the uh, soul stone side. Now, similar to evolving your Skylanders, this will also improve your attack, defense, and HP of your Skylander. However, you will also be able to improve one of the skills uh, and give get a little bit more value out of it. So if we're taking a look at the Gorilla Driller right here, his skill called One-Two Punch, it essentially throws a one-two punch into the enemy and casts the heal down or heal break for one turn. But if we were to go ahead and awaken it, uh, we will be able to attack the enemy at close range and cast the heal down for one turn onto all enemies. So this ability here goes from a single target to an AOE, which can be very, very useful if you're on a specific stage that where the enemy basically revolves around healing himself, whether it's with his abilities or maybe one of his sidekicks and whatnot. So, you know, kind of keep that in mind when you're looking at these Skylanders. But like I said before, this is an end game uh, feature that we're going to be looking at, exclusive feature that we don't want to mess around with all too much here because the requirements of it are really, really high. So again, that being said, though, you should be keeping an eye on some of these Skylanders, taking a look at their abilities, uh, their skill set, and see which ones 
uh, provide a little bit of value. Now, if you guys are curious where you can obtain those materials to go ahead and improve your Skylanders, uh, Distorted Dimension is going to be the place to go. So clicking on this right here, you will see the regular dungeons for your runes, uh, but also the elemental dungeons where you can obtain the ores and, of course, the upgrade elixirs that we were talking about. Now, keep in mind that not every single dungeon is going to be open every day. So if you have a specific Skylander for uh, an element here, for example, Life Dungeon, uh, for me, I'm going to have to wait 13 hours before I can do it here. So kind of keep that in mind if you're curious on trying to improve a specific calendar. But uh, ultimately, uh, just getting into one of these dungeons early on and having a chance to farm it a little bit is not a bad thing. Because as you can see, taking a look at the light dungeon right here, we can upgrade, we can obtain the upgrade elixir. And uh, as you can see right here, even though we have the dark ore that we can get, we can also obtain the upgrade elixir uh, from this one as well, uh, just for some of the basic leveling up uh, when you have enough fragments to power up your Skylander. So once again, guys, uh, that's pretty much going to be it for this video. I understand that we just threw a lot of different stuff your way. Please take the time to leave a comment in the comment section down below if you have any questions on anything we discussed in this video or any videos that I've already put out there. Uh, once again, I want to extend my thanks on over to Comptos for sponsoring this video. Thank you guys so much for your support, and I will see you guys all in the next one. Take care.